Draft continues at Barclays Center. This is the Knicks Draft Special presented by Michelob uh, Ultra. Great to have you with us, Bill Pito and Wally Zerbiak, as we continue. And we now say hello to ESPN College Basketball analyst Fran Fraschilla. He joins us from Barclays Center. Fran, as always, we appreciate it. So for the Knicks tonight, the summary is that they turned the 11th pick and Kemba Walker into three conditional number ones and cap space. What do you think about that? Well, my feeling on this draft is there were 15 guys I really liked at various places in this first round, Bill. And, and Leon Rose and his, and his crew must have felt like when they got to 11, you know what? There's nobody here we love. We'll trade the pick. We'll open up space. This team needs veteran players. If they were not confident that there was a guy at 11 that could help them win now, I thought they did the right thing. We'll, it will remain to be seen until free agency is over. But I don't have a problem with this because uh, they, have to, they have to go by what their gut instincts tell them on whether they, their 11th pick tonight would have helped them or not. Fran, you have great instincts on prospects. After seeing the first round, what do you think is the big-time storyline coming out of this draft overall in the NBA? Well, obviously, Wally, as I and many people look at the top three in this draft, I'm talking about the three bad teams and the three big guys, I felt, along with a lot of people, that everybody had an – it was split 33 percent. Everybody I talked to said, well, a third of us like Bancaro first, a third of us like uh, Jabari Smith, and a third like Holmgren. Obviously, Orlando liked Bancaro enough to take him number one. And why I think he fits there of the three is you look at their team, they have some good young players – Franz Wagner, Wendell Carter, we'll see what they do at Mo Bamba. Obviously, Fultz, Jonathan Isaac coming back. But they did not have a three-level go-to scorer. And of the three big guys at the top of the draft, Paolo Bancaro fits that to a T. So I had no problem with that. The other big story I thought was Jaden Ivey, who we didn't know until we interviewed him a little while ago, has so much history with the city of Detroit his grandfather played with the Lions, his dad's from Detroit, his mom's from Detroit, that he made it clear he was not going to Sacramento. He didn't interview for him. He didn't work out for him. And he dropped to five, and I think Detroit added themselves a terrific young player who could be the best player in this draft to go with Kate Cunningham and Sadiq Bey as my former assistant coach, Troy Weaver, builds that Pistons franchise. Fran, what else stood out to you in terms of picks you liked in the first round and maybe some picks that you didn't like so much? Well, I think um, a kid I was high on, uh, and I think he went in the right place, Mark Williams from Duke. Seven foot one, uh, seven, 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 eight wingspan. He's going to Charlotte. They'll probably re sign uh, Miles Bridges. They've got Lamelo. They've got themselves a shot blocker, a really mature kid, and I think he fits Charlotte to a T. I like what San Antonio did as far as getting some good young players. Jeremy Sohan at number nine, Malachi Branham at Ohio State. Uh, my guy from the Big 12, Christian Brown, he went awfully high for me at, I think, 21 to the Nuggets. But, uh, again, Wally knows this because uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves hit on him big time. But of the 30 guys taken tonight, we know 15 of them are going to be busts. They got the guarantee money. That's great. But 15 of them are not going to be great NBA players or even good NBA players. So every time we come around to late June, we're rolling the dice. There'll be some great choices. There'll be some bad choices. Now we've got to let these guys get on the court and we'll find out. Yeah, no question. And it's just interesting to me, Fran, and uh, I want to get your thoughts on this. The NBA overall, it's getting younger. You have to win with youth. And it just puts so much importance on the draft. Just what are front offices thinking when they're trying to compose a game plan to get their franchise better? You know, Wally, I would say this. If every team in the league knew what they were doing, everybody would end up 41 and 41 every year. Uh, the simple fact is some of these uh, people, some of these teams do it better than others. You know, I think we know that. Uh, Miami does it well. Toronto has drafted well lately. Uh, San Antonio with their history, obviously. So, I mean, I think, I think at every point, in the, especially the first round, you're dealing with two choices, project, projection or production. 
And sometimes you project a kid out four to five years and he turns out to be an NBA star. Other times you take a kid who's a little older, like tonight, Ochai Abaji from Kansas, going to Cleveland where they have a need for his skill. When you look what they're building with Mobley and uh, Darius Garland, and he's a four-year guy. I watched him play. He was not ready to be a 14th pick in the draft until this year. So as you know, every case is different. There's no right answer. Some of these young guys are going to pan out. They're 19 or 18. They'll pan out. Some of them won't. And then some of the older guys will, will pan out as well. So I think every single prospect and every team situation is different from pick to pick. And it changes year to year as well. Fran, we talked when we opened the show. No number one pick for the Knicks. Saves them about $3.7 million. Uh, they've reportedly moved Kemba Walker to Detroit. Yep. If and when that becomes official, that saves them another $9 million under the cap. So with the Knicks freeing up cap space, what is your expectation about how they might proceed once free agency comes? Well, obviously, the big talk, uh, and it makes sense because of what's going on in the front office, is a kid I've been watching for a long time, Jalen Brunson. The question is now, if you're Jalen Brunson, you have the familiarity of Dallas. You have the familiarity of Luka Doncic and being with Luka from the start of their careers versus the familiarity of his dad's first agent, his dad, a family friend of Tom Thibodeau, and oh, by the way, his agent is Leon Rose's son. So that young man's got a difficult decision because he's a winner, he's a tough kid, he's gonna get paid well. Dallas has to be ruling the day that they didn't give him his 55 million at the All-Star break last year. I, and I think it's clear now that the Knicks are gonna make a run at him. And the crazy thing is, if Jalen stays in Dallas, and the Knicks already know what he's going to do. I don't think there's any question. But if he were to stay in Dallas, do the Knicks make a run at the guy that grew up in Jersey and may be a free agent here um, in, uh, in, uh, in Kyrie Irving? You know, obviously, that's going to be very interesting to see how the Nets proceed and what they offer him. But uh, that's got to be something that's in the back of their minds as well. But obviously right now, Jalen Brunson seems to be the odds-on favorite to end up in New York. All right, Fran. So I'm on Netflix last night. <laughs> Adam Sandler's movie, Hustle. He's an NBA scout. And up yeah. pops Fran Fraschilla. Did you see the movie? Have you seen it? You're very good. Yeah, Have you was, seen it yet? Uh, I've seen it twice. I went to the premiere. Adam Sandler is as good a guy as you think. Um, the cameos were great. Hustle, too. We're going to get Wally Zerbiak in there. Uh, it was cool to see all those guys. And the coolest thing was I did, the, I did the draft for 12 years at ESPN. They went in a different direction. But Adam Sandler knows talent when he sees it. And for me to be in that movie and to do what I did, uh, even for 30 seconds, was one of my great thrills. And uh, I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. And... Uh, it's a great basketball movie if your listeners and viewers haven't seen it yet. I, I really enjoyed it. And, Fran, I think you have a, a, an excellent second career, potentially, as an actor. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I told you 20 years ago that I wanted to do what you were doing when I was coaching. That worked out. And I always tell young coaches, have a plan B. In this case, I might need a plan C. <laughs> 